Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the last video of the year. I don't know if you're excited, but I'm excited. So, that's good, last video, but also kind of bad at the same time. That means you have a quiz coming up, a test coming up, and the final. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so section 7 is about similar solids. So this is something that we did in chapter 11, we did in chapter 6, so now we're doing it again. Two objectives. The first one is to use the ratio of sides to calculate missing surface areas and volumes. And then we're going to use the ratios of surface areas and volumes to calculate missing sides. So basically we're going to be calculating ratios, setting up a proportion, and solving using cross products. Before we jump into these objectives, I just want to review what it means for objects to be similar. So first one, what does it mean for two objects to be similar? This is way back in first semester. It means that their sides are proportional. So that means that they have the same scale factor, the sides do. And the angles are congruent. So the way I think of similar figures is that you took a figure and then you blew it up to a new figure. Those figures are going to be similar. So similar figures, it's like you take a figure and you blow one up or you shrink one down. How do we know if two objects are similar? One, their angles are congruent. And then two, their sides are proportional. So the one that we are going to focus on today is this sides proportional. And then, what is the relationship between the side lengths of similar figures and their areas? This goes back to chapter 11, so the chapter that we uh, did right before this. Hopefully you remember if that if you have similar figures, when you square the sides, you will get the ratio of the areas. So you're going to have to use that today, so just keep that in the back of your mind. First thing that you need to be able to do is determine whether uh, the following solids are similar. So I have this solid on the left, and I want to know if either of the solids on the right are similar. So I'm going to set up a proportion. On the left side, I have sides of 4, 2, and 2. Okay, then solid A, I have sides of 8, 4, and 2. The biggest side is 8, so that's going to go with my 4. This 4 is the middle side. Well, the only options I have left are 2 and 2. They're the same, so it doesn't really matter. Um, 2, then, is the smallest side, so it's going to go with the smallest side on my first figure. Now, simplifying, 4 over 8 is 1 half. 2 over 4 is 1 half. 2 over 2 is 1. These are not the same. So, our solid is not similar to A. Okay, now you try with solid B. So you're going to have to set up some proportions again and decide if the solids are similar. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. On figure B, 6 is the largest side, so that's going to go with 4. My other two sides are 3, so those are going to match with my 2s. 4 over 6 simplifies to 2 thirds, so I get 2 thirds equals 2 thirds equals 2 thirds. So our figure, yes, is similar to solid B. So hopefully you got that one right. That was just a quick review. Um, you will be asked to do some of those problems in class. Are the, the solids similar? You just see if their sides are proportional. So all of that was review. None of that was new so far. What is new is the next theorem, the similar solids theorem. Okay, so this says if two solids are similar, then the ratio of the sides squared will give us the ratio of the surface areas. Similarly, the ratio of the sides cubed will give us the ratio of the volumes. 
And this should make sense. If you think back to units, for surface area, it's always units squared. For volume, it's always units cubed. So if I square the sides, I'm going to get the areas. If I cube the sides, I'm going to get the volumes. So we're going to be using both of these ideas to set up some proportions. Let's move on to the next example. Okay, so example number one, it says, the cans shown are similar with a scale factor of 87 to 100. Find the scale factor and volume of the larger can. Okay, so first one, scale factor, or I'm sorry, surface area and volume. So let's start with surface area. If I take the sides and I square them, I'm going to get the surface areas. Okay, sides, that's like scale factor. So I'm going to take 87 over 100, and I'm going to square it, and that's going to give me the ratio of the surface areas. Now I know that the surface area of the smaller can is 51.84. I don't know the surface area of the larger can. And now I'm going to, now I'm going to start simplifying. 87 squared is going to give me 7,569. 100 squared is going to give me 10,000 equals 551.84 over x. I'm going to do my cross products. When I do that, I get 7,569x equals 518,400. If I divide by 7,569 to both sides, I get x, which is the surface area, to be 68.49 inches squared. 68.49 inches squared. Okay, so that was the surface area. Now I have to find the volume. Remember that the sides cubed are going to give me the volume. So this time I have 87 over 100 cubed equals volume of the smaller can is 28.27. I'm looking for the volume of the larger can. First I'm going to do the cubed. So 87 cubed gives me 658,503. 10,000 cubed or 100 cubed is going to give me a million equals 28.27 over x. We would do the cross products in this case. When I do that, I get x, which is the volume, to be 42.93 inches cubed. Okay, and that's the answer. So, uh, as you guys know, I always like to check, check my answer. So remember that these are the surface area and volume of the larger can. Okay, so they should both be bigger than the ones we were given. We were given a surface area of 51.84, and our answer of 68.49 is definitely larger. That's a good sign. We were given a volume of 28.27. Our volume of 42.93 is definitely larger. So both cases, our answers make sense, which is, which is a good sign. Okay, so that was moving forwards. I have the ratio of the sides, and I'm going to find a surface area and a volume. Next, I want to move backwards. So I'm giving you surface area and volume, and you have to find the sides. So looking at example number two. It says cube C has a surface area of 216 square units, and cube D has a surface area of 600 square units. Find the scale factor. So scale factor just means I want to find the sides, the ratio of the sides. I'm given surface areas. Okay, so I need to remember that the sides squared are going to give me the ratio of the surface areas. Okay, so I have sides squared are going to give me the ratio of 216 to 600. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify that ratio. In my calculator, I'm going to do 216 divided by 600 and hit math frac. When I do that, I get 9 over 25. Okay, that's the sides squared, though. That's not the ratio of the sides. So to find the ratio of the sides, I need to take the square root. Okay, square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 25 is 5. So the scale factor is 3 
to 5. Okay, next question. We are asked to find the edge length of C. So this is a little bit different. This is review. It says that C is a cube. Okay, so the edges are going to be x, x, and x. They're all going to be the same. And we are told that the surface area is 216. Well, if we think on each cube, all the sides are going to be the same. So each side, each face, is going to be x times x, which is x squared. The surface area, then, is going to be 6x squared. That's because I have six of those faces that are x squared. So this is a review. Finding surface area of a, a prism, just add up all the sides. Each side is x squared, and I have six of them, so I get 6x squared. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find that edge length, that x, that side length. So I get my surface area of 6x squared. That's equal to my surface area of 216. Now I'm going to divide by 6. Divide by 6, I get x squared equals 36. Take the square root, and I get x equals 6. So the side length of C is 6. 6 units. Okay, and then the third part of this question says find the volume of D. Okay, so in order to find a volume, I would need to know a side length of D, which I don't know. Or I could find the volume of C and use a ratio. So that's what I'm going to do. So remember that I have my little cube C. So this is cube C, and my sides are 6, 6, and 6. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the volume. Because it's a prism, it's going to be area of the base multiplied by the height. The base is 6 times 6, and the height is also 6. This gives me a volume of 216. Now, the surface area is also 216. That's just a special case. That's not always going to be the case. It's just special here. So this is the volume of C. Now I know that my sides cubed are going to give me my volumes. So the, sides, the ratio of the sides I have is 3 to 5. And that's what I found in the first question. Then I'm going to set that equal to my volumes. The one volume I have is 216. The other one I'm solving for. Simplifying, I get 27 over 125 equals 216 over volume. I'm going to do cross products. So I'm going to end up doing 216 multiplied by 125, and then I'm going to have to divide by 27. When I do that, I get the volume of D to be 1,000 units cubed. Okay, again, so what I did is I found the side length in the second part. I used that to find the volume of C, and then I set up a ratio to find the volume of D. That's not the only way to go about the problem, it's just one way. Another way you could have gone about the problem is you could have found a side of D using the surface area, and then found the volume. Or you could have found a side of D using the scale factor, and then found the volume. A whole bunch of ways to approach the problem, this was just the way that I chose to approach it. Okay, let's look at example three. It says the pyramids shown are similar. Pyramid P has a volume of 1,000 cubic inches. Pyramid Q has a volume of 216 cubic inches. Find the scale factor of pyramid P to pyramid Q. Okay, this one I'm going to let you try on your own. So, look back at the first page of notes, pause the video, and take two or three minutes to do this one on your own. When you are ready, come back and I will go over it with you. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. We know that the Okay, let's see how we did. We know that the scale factor is just the ratio of the sides. I'm also given volumes. Now I know that the ratio of the sides cubed is going to give me the volumes. So in this case, I have sides cubed equals my volume of 1000 
to 216. Now it asks us for the ratio of P to Q. That's why I did 1,000 over 216. P needs to come first. Now, that's the sides cubed. I need just the sides. So I'm going to have to take the cube root. So hopefully you remember how to do this on your calculator. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take the cube root of 1,000, and then you're going to have to take the cube root of 216. Cube root is under math, and it's number 4. Now when I do that, I get my sides equals the cube root of 10, or of 1,000 is 10. The cube root of 216 is 6. Now I need to simplify this. Dividing both my two, I get the scale factor to be 5 to 3. And that's my answer. Hopefully that went well for you. If you got that right, great job. If you made a mistake, that's okay, we're still learning. If you would please, flip to the next page. Okay, we have one more to do together, and then you have one to do on your own. So it says solid A, shown, is similar to solid B, not shown with the given scale factor. Find the surface area and volume of solid B. Now this is very similar to example number one. I'm going to start by finding the surface area. Remember that sides squared are going to give me surface area. So my scale factor is 3 to 2, so I have 3 over 2 squared equals the one surface area I have is 324 pi and then I'm looking for the surface area of solid B. So I have 9 over 4 equals 324 pi over x. Okay, now I'm going to do cross products. I get 9x equals. In this case, you're going to do 4 multiplied by 324, but you're not going to include pi. You get 1,296 pi dividing by 9. I get the surface area to be 144 pi inches squared. Okay, that was surface area. You have to do volume. Pause the video, try it on your own, and come back when you are finished, please. Let's see how we did. You should have remembered or looked back and saw that sides cubed give us the volumes. Our sides or our scale factor is 3 to 2. So 3 over 2 cubed equals 972 pi over x. And you should have used cross products. When you do that, you get the volume to be 288 pi inches cubed. So hopefully that one went well for you. If you got it wrong, please make sure you go back and fix whatever you did wrong. Okay, so did we accomplish the objectives? The first one is we used sides, we used a scale factor, and we calculated surface areas and volumes. So that's what we just did in example four. Then we used the ratios of surface areas and volumes to calculate missing sides. So that was like example two. I gave you a surface area or volume, you went backward to find the sides. You have one last problem to do on your own. It's this objective problem right here. When you come to class tomorrow, I'll be checking to make sure that you have it completed. Good luck.